In this video, I'm going to talk about the Kaweco Sport Brass from the perspective of an artist that uses fountain pens to draw. This pen is very popular with artists and shows up in a lot of portable sketching kits, so I'm going to show it to you, tell you why I used to think it was silly, and why after buying it I still think it's kind of silly, but worth getting anyway. So why, despite this pen's popularity, did I hold off buying it? Well, just look at it. It's tiny, even when compared to other pocket pens, being only 10.5 centimeters long. Here it is next to a few other pocket pens, the Twisby Mini, the Opus 88 Fantasia, and the Pilot Prera. What's worse, while other pocket pens grow, becoming the size of normal pens when posted, the cap on the Kaweco posts very deeply, and the pen becomes only an inch longer at 13.5 centimeters. As much as I enjoy compact art materials, travel palettes, travel brushes, etc., I don't, want, I don't want my materials to get so miniaturized that they're no longer comfortable to use, and this pen looked a little bit too small to be comfortable. Then there's the weight. I have a few metal pens, like this Jinhao X750 and this Pilot Metropolitan, and they're already pretty clunky. Brass is a very heavy material, and this thing looked like it was built like a tank, and again, I didn't think such a pen would be comfortable to use even for short periods of time. Then there's the issue of ink capacity. I go through a lot of ink very quickly, and like having a large ink reservoir even on my small pens. This is why I adore this Twisby Mini, and this Opus 88 Fantasia, both of which store more ink than many of their full-size rivals. This pen, unfortunately, uses short international cartridges, or this teeny tiny converter that looks like a toy. I don't like the hassle of having to refill my pen every time I want to take it outside, or remember, remember to take extra ink cartridges with me, so the minuscule ink capacity in this pen was a deal breaker. Despite all of these reservations, I decided to buy one anyway. What changed my mind? It had something to do with the birth of my second child, an increase in the number of classes I was teaching, both of which resulted in a drastic decrease in the amount of time I could spend on my art. Realizing that if I only made art when I was in my studio, it would severely hamper my productivity, I started putting together a portable art supply kit. This allowed me to get a few extra minutes of drawing in during the day, but I found that there were plenty of situations where I had almost no use for this stuff in this case, and all I needed was a pen in my pocket. That made me realize how very few pens in my collection could be comfortable and comfortably and safely carried without a sleeve or a case to protect them. I needed a pen that I could throw in my pocket and not worry that it was jangling around and getting scratched up by my keys. The Kaweco Brass is just that pen. I've had it for a little over a month and it's already developed a nice patina and the scratches on it just make it look better. This is a pen that looks better the worse it's treated and I'm looking forward to seeing how it patinas and wears with a lot of use and abuse. The Sport also comes in aluminum, which is equally sturdy, but significantly cheaper and lighter. So why did I get this brass version? Well, did I say I tend to be practical when it comes to my tools? That's clearly not entirely true. I have a strong affection for old tools and machines. I used to play with my grandfather's typewriter from the 1920s as a child, and such old, well-constructed machines make me long for a time when things were not designed to be disposable. This heavy brass pen that looks like a part from a 19th century steam engine tickles that nostalgic nerve in a way that not even the vintage pens in my collection do. Now that I've used this pen for a while, let's talk about its unusual ergonomics. Yes, it's small, but what surprised me is how much this pen's weight makes up for its small size. This is something I hadn't considered because I'm used to working with much lighter plastic or ebonite pens. Furthermore, the girth of the cap and how deeply it posts gives the pen a very nice balance and stability in the hand, so much so that after a while you forget how short it really is. And somehow, despite the fact that this pen weighs considerably more than many of my other pens, I also quickly lose awareness of its weight. After a few hours of drawing, both weight and size fades into the background, and the pen becomes an extension of my hand, which is exactly what you want in a pen, to not know that it's even there. The grip section is a touch small, which pushes your fingers onto the threads, but in this case, instead of being an irritant, it actually gives you a little bit more grip, which given the weight is welcome. I would love to see the addition of knurling on the grip section like there is on these rotring pencils. Not only would it add more stability to the grip, but I think the additional contrast and texture would be a nice touch. There are a few other things about this pen that make it a pleasure that are not ergonomic, but haptic. Brass is an excellent conductor of heat and warms rapidly, making the pen pleasantly warm to the touch. 
The material is smooth but not overly polished, and there's something strangely soothing about holding such a heavy object. Also, and I'm fully aware about how silly I'm being, the precision on which the cap slides in when posting is oddly satisfying. For those of you that enjoy fidgeting with your pens, not only is posting and unposing pleasant, but also capping and uncapping with a precise stick when you fully close it. This pen is a fidgeter's delight. By the way, in case you're not already aware, the clip is sold separately, which is of course annoying, but it's definitely not necessary for this pen because the hexagonal cap keeps the pen from rolling, and the weight keeps it from falling out of your pocket. The clip comes in a minimalist modern and fancier vintage looking design and in a variety of metal finishes. But now, after all the talk of aesthetics and haptics, let's remind ourselves that this isn't a fancy paperweight or a fidget toy, but a pen. So let's get down to brass tacks and examine its drawing performance. This is an extra fine nib, but despite being made by a Western manufacturer, it puts down a very fine dry line that you might expect from a Japanese pen. The nib has a touch of feedback, and as for line variation, don't expect much, but with pressure you can tease out a little. All in all, a very well-functioning, well-performing nib that doesn't skip, even when working fast, that's perfectly good for most drawing purposes. As I mentioned previously, the unique ergonomics of this pen makes it comfortable in the hand despite its small size and substantial weight. While I haven't drawn with it for many hours at a time, I suspect that I could probably do it without much fatigue or strain. While you can buy the Kaweco Premium Steel Nib or upgrade to a Gold Nib, from what I've seen, the difference is negligible. However, there is one way you can make this pen write much, much better. The Kaweco Sport is one of the few modern pens that can be fitted with a number 2 vintage gold nib. This particular number 2 is on the smaller side, being 22mm long and 5mm across at the base. Finding a compatible nib takes a bit of searching, but is well worth the effort. I recommend 5 star pens in the United States. They usually have a very good selection of vintage nibs. I've also had very good luck on the German pen board. Since the feed on this pen is plastic and not particularly generous with ink flow, I would not recommend putting a full flex nib into this. But with a semi flex, such as this one, the ink flow is adequate and, as you can see by this demonstration, there is no railroading even if I move the pen very quickly and under considerable pressure. While a vintage pen with a vintage ebonite feed would perform even better, I would never dare put a vintage pen in my pocket. While a vintage pen with a vintage ebonite feed would perform even better, I would never dare put a fragile vintage pen in my pocket. With this pen, I have the best of both worlds, the performance of a vintage nib and the sturdiness of a modern all-metal pen body. As for the pen's poor ink capacity, I guess I'm just going to have to live with it. This is a pen that I would only use for relatively short periods of time anyway when I want to sketch a little. If I know there will be opportunity to do longer sketches, I'm going to bring my portable case instead. And really, despite how much I dislike them, cartridges are really the most practical option. Cartridge pens are a cinch to clean and to switch inks with. There are plenty of ink choices available, and cartridges are as easy to carry in your pocket as the pen, so long as I remember to take them. Also, some very thrifty people even go to the links of refilling their cartridges using a syringe, but I find that method rather messy. The alternative, of course, is the converter, which is cute, but useless. Not only is the capacity less than half an ink cartridge, but the piston has only one seal in it, and many people have complained that the ink can get behind the piston, resulting in leakage. There's also an older discontinued squeeze converter that you can buy in some places, but it's also not terribly good since you can never really fill it all the way up. Because ink is corrosive to metal, this pen cannot be converted into an eyedropper the way you could with plastic versions of the Kaweco Sport. But there is a hack that drastically increases the ink capacity that I'm going to show you now. You can order some silicone ink sacs, I found the 8.5 size to be about right, and some silicone adhesive. Then you can cut a cartridge and, using silicone adhesive, glue a sack to it, and voila, you've just created a sack filling converter that can hold quite a bit of ink. You can also use latex sacks for this purpose, but I like the fact that silicone is see-through. Making these bulb filling converters takes a few minutes and is a super easy, fun little project. The only downside is that sack filling mechanisms are notoriously drippy, which is why they're seldom used in modern pens. My concern is, given that how easily the pen conducts heat, there in the sack might expand, causing the pen to burp. 
I'm going to hold off my verdict on this, but perhaps some of you are willing to try this hack out and tell me how well it works for you. And here's the last thing I'd like to show you. If you don't like having this pen jangling with your keys in your pocket, Koiko has a number of very nice little pen cases designed specifically for a pen this size. This little case is for two pens, and I use it to also carry this little Koweiko special mini clutch pencil. This little case is small enough to fit in your pocket and is very well made and highly recommended. I hope you enjoyed my review of the Koweiko Sport Brass from the perspective of an artist. This is a fun, unusual little pen that is surprisingly comfortable in the hand, and though it has some downsides, like a functional converter, I think its ability to withstand abuse makes it valuable to any artist that enjoys sketching in the field. By the way, I'm very pleased to announce that I'm now part of the affiliate program at Goldspot Pens. So if you want to get this pen, or any other, and support my channel, please make your purchase through the link in the description below. Thanks for watching, and as always, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below, and I'll be happy to respond.